When I received this sketchbook, it has 96 pages in it, <laughs> and it was the first handmade sketchbook that I bought. From there, the fear of the white page, I mean 96 blank pages. What was I going to fill this with? <laughs> I had no idea. I was fairly new to watercolor. I had only done really small things, and this was very overwhelming. However, I bought the 96 pages because I know the importance of practice. So getting past these pages was a huge thing. <laughs> I just want to say that right now. And you can see it's almost full. It's not quite there. I've got this many more pages and then it's full. So I'm pretty proud of myself for achieving this so quickly, in my mind anyways, because I use it quite regularly. And I thought I would share some tips with you. As you can see, I've got it all marked up so that it would be easy to tell you the processes that I've gone through. So the first thing that I did when I got this book was to find photos that I could mix colors with. I call it palette play. It's derived from my Cultivated Color class, which I did a video on. I will link it in the description. What that means is you have a photo of anything. I found a bunch of different artwork and I just pasted it in my book. So let me show you what that looks like. So here is a picture. You can see I cut it down the middle so that it wouldn't buckle in the seams. And what I did was I looked for colors that I want to practice mixing on. Let me bring this a little closer so you can see that. So any color that I found up here, I tried to mix it and I put them up here. Any color that I found around here, I mixed them the best to my ability and my palette and I put them here. Then I went to the other side and any kind of colors that I saw here, I put them on this side. It is a great way to practice your color mixing. You really become quite adept to your palette on what it can do and can't do. And sometimes that's a good thing and sometimes that's a bad thing because you know its limitations, but you also know if you're going to add any colors, what colors you wanna add. I just find this really a good practice and I felt so much better <laughs> just having these pasted in the book because it was no longer blank pages. I actually had pages in here full of things. So let me show you a couple more. Here's a really muted one. Notice that I tried to give myself totally different pictures. One was bright, one was really pastel, one was really vibrant colors. One was really moody colors. And you can see these colors are totally, look how pale those are. So coming up with those colors from your palette is like, oh my gosh, can I do that? It's a lot of water. So just don't forget that even though you have like say a dark purple on your palette, if you add water, you get a beautiful color like that. So don't underestimate the muted palette or the pastel palette because any color, when you add water, you have a nice pastel color. This is what I mean by very vibrant. Again, I always try to put the colors next to the section. So in this section, I pulled these colors. Up here in the sky and the roof, I pulled those colors. Over here in this craziness, I pulled these colors. And you can see that it's really stretching my ability because when you have to mix muted and then brights and then natural, it really makes you think about how can I mute this? What can I add to get this bright color? What can I do to tone this down? And it's a fun exercise. And anything goes. <laughs> Here's another one that it's the picture. Look at this photo. 
you see the person right there? <laughs> I really just like looking for things that are different because look at, there's like this bright orange in here. There's this bright lime pink. Then there's a lot of turquoise blues. This whole row up here had pinks and purples and olive greens and browns and peaches. So there's a lot going on in that photo and it's really something to try to mix. Trust me on that one. <laughs> and then this one I just loved for the reds and the oranges. I don't really create a lot in reds and oranges. So when I saw this, I knew I had to have this in my book because look at the color variety here. I love this whole little row of deep colors. And I like trying to get the pastels in there. Isn't that a gorgeous piece of art? So that's what I mean by palette play. So do not throw away any kind of magazines or anything. This is a great way to pull something out and just match colors. The next thing I have for you is new techniques. I have several new techniques in here. I'm gonna show you stencils first using stencils on your pieces. So here, I just filled it with like a beehive kind of feel stencil. And I kept it within the heart. And I tried to give just various colors. So various shades, I should say, of the brown. There's a lot of stuff in here. This was a big stencil from Stencil Girl by my friend Ray Missigman, and I loved playing with this. I wanted the pages to match, so I did this one first, and then I used the remaining colors on my palette for this, and I just love the way that that turned out. I should be taking these off as I go through them. This was inspired by Marmalade Mondays on Instagram. She had used some stencils on some birds and I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. And so I tried it. I put some stencils out here. I stenciled numbers. They're probably my favorite thing to stencil, you guys. <laughs> and then I did different lines. And I just really like the texture that it gives these birds. They're kind of crazy looking birds, but let me show you up close. See how I kind of took the stenciling out and about even and made them just really light. These are lines. See that I extended some of the lines above and beyond the bird. And then these were dots. And I did use um, a wax crayon for these dots inside, but then the outside ones I just colored in. I just really like the way that that looks. It's fun, it's different, and it was a really exciting technique to try. The other layers that I have are the yellow ones. <laughs> so this, one day I had really big leaves. I know you're shocked that I would have leaves. <laughs> but when I laid them over one another, I liked the effect that that had. So what I did was I traced them all on first with pencil. And then I did the dark on the outsides and then the dark on the middle. And then I came back and did the light and the light here. And I really liked the way that that looks. It was a different kind of layering and it gave it a really nice appeal in my, in my book anyways, in my opinion, I should say. I love the, having the dark greens, but I love also having the light green kind of separate that. And you can see I took some light green and just added it. I wasn't too concerned about being in the lines. And then once it was all finished, I took a marker and just went around the outside to just really define my shapes. And you can see here, this is really defined, but I do have ink for that leaf. See that? Pretty fun, right? <laughs> At least I thought so. Okay, yellows. We're done with it. This was just a splashing exercise. I wanted to see how wild I could get my splashes. <laughs> I know. It was just something to try because usually I'm very like, just gently do it. But this time I was like, wham, wham, really throwing water at it. And what I found was that it splashes over to the side and it makes these really cool um patterns because if this is real wet and soppy and you throw water at it like that with force 
it kind of splashes it out. And you'll see that in some of the red here. You can see some of these colors, how they went off and around. And I just really enjoyed that. I tried to use brighter colors than what I normally use to just see what would happen. And I like the results a lot. I mean, look how messy that is. But to me, that's really fun because I got to see it in action. So a lot of paint on the item. This is another good one too. And with the force of the water, look just how it's everywhere. <laughs> and then I spattered. I was trying to spatter with a brush. I used to spatter with a toothbrush. So trying to get it whipped off my brush was kind of fun and, and kind of nerve wracking at the same time. <laughs> but I managed to do it. This, I did like a reverse painting. So imagine that I had these leaves and I stuck them here and I did just the background. And then here I cut out the leaves. So I wanted to see if I could make them look kind of the same shape. <laughs> like this was cut out up here and then I moved it over here, but I did use two different colors. So I used the darker colors here and then here I used a little more light colors. But I really like the effect. This is really something that I want to explore a little further. I just love having that whiteness and I liked having the darkness with the variety of shades in there. So you can see I just didn't do one color. I did multiple uh, values so that I could have a lot of interest. This is one on layering. I'm trying to get better and understand layering. So wet on wet, wet on dry, dry on wet, you know, those kind of things. So this, I started with the tag and then I worked up to each layer and I treated them all a little different. You can see the um, tag here. I went from yellow to like this rusty burnt sienna color and then the bottom I did like a darker red to burnt sienna so that I would have kind of like an ombre effect, which is just a, an effect of colors from yellow to orange to red so that I get that nice kind of layered look. And then having fun with little ribbons and details, that was um, an interesting little exercise for myself. And that's my word for the year. <laughs> okay, one more back here. And then this technique here was using a pipette. In one of my classes, I knew that I wanted to use a pipette. So you fill this with, you squeeze it and fill it with paint and hold it. And then you come over here and you squirt it. <laughs> and so I was practicing first before I showed the class how to do it. And I really liked granulating paint, putting that in the pipette because you really don't have control of it. I guess you could be really kind of tentative, but I enjoyed kind of just squirting it and seeing where it went. When trying this technique, you should take a brush and fill the tree first, not these really fine lines, but the thicker trunk, fill them with just water. So think of just a damp little water trail not standing puddles or anything, and then take your pipette and kind of um, pour it into there, and that will help it dissipate and give you a different mingling. So while it's wet, you know, it kind of works with each other and it kind of spreads like this. So it's a good thing adding that water and it just makes it go by a little easier. I also do some YouTube tutorials in here. I don't have many in this because sometimes I just use scrap pieces of paper, but these I wanted to remember. So those are the orange ones. This is by Susanna Rose Art and it's her demo. And what this is about is she does palettes and they kind of just run into one another and I really like that. So it taught me to use a little more water than what I do and it taught me to work quick <laughs> because if you're gonna run one into the other, they all have to be wet in order to run down. So instead of like taking your time, you have to move. <laughs> While it was wet, she took different mixed media things like um, some Neocolor crayons, some watercolor pencils, some just dry colored pencils. 
um, just all kinds of different things, some salt. She used all kinds of different textures and I thought that was really neat. So I was here experimenting with while it was wet, I came in here with my um, Derwent watercolor pencils and tried that. Here was wet and dry. This one was wet, but that one was dry. So it was giving me like a darker line here and lighter here. And you can see the same up here. This square was wet when I did it, but the rest was kind of dry. So I'm getting like these heavy marks here where it was wet and then dry marks where it was dry. Again, heavy where it was wet and then dry. And you can see this one. I just thought that was just a really nice technique. She does a much more beautiful job. Trust me, hers are amazing. I'm just trying something new here. <laughs> Here's another one. And this one, I just tried it with six colors. And I tried with pencil. Here I used pencil. Here I used the colored, uh, the watercolor pencils. And it looks like nail color crayons. But I like this too. This one, I actually dipped the pencil in water and then did the lines here. Here was wet and dry. So again, I got those lines going. And then I tried really dry to see how light I could get it. This and this is the same color. And so trying to get it much lighter so that you barely saw it, but then I liked how dark this got. So it's just a really fun technique. So I would look her up, Susanna Rose Art. Then the last thing we have is color swatches. You know I love color swatches. So there's a nice variety in here. This one, I took one color green gold and one color Prussian green and just kept mixing. So I just kept mixing it down the line to, to get to the true color here and the true color here. This was Quinn Coral and Forest Gray. This was Lavender and Indigo. And this was Aurelian and Mayan Blue. So you can see that it gives you so many beautiful values. And this is also a great way to test your colors to see what they do with each other. You know, a lot of times I'm trying to figure out how to mute my colors down. So by adding the forest gray here, this is what Quinn Coral starts like. This is forest gray. I would probably use something in this range for myself. So you can see, I'll pull you down the page here. It's just a great way to test colors. This is one, I got some new paints. So this is Magello Mission watercolor paints. And I wanted to see what the colors did. So I have them full strength, about 50% water, and then about 90% water. So I wanted to see what the different values would do for me. And what was interesting is, you see how pale they got, right? Look at that beautiful palette of softness here and here. You can see this is brilliant pink. But by the time it gets to that 50%, it's a nice pink, and then it's a really, really pale pink. This is shell pink, or shell pink. Again, it's like a peachy pink, but I love these two colors more than these. Usually I like the more uh, watered down colors because that suits my palette. It's a great way to see what color range you have with each of your colors. Simple, but beautiful to look at as well. This is what inspired my 100 day project. On Instagram, I got so many comments about this. And what it was, was the flowers were this color and the leaves were this color. So I wanted to see what, if I combined, what would happen. So this is shell pink, quin coral, and then green appetite green. And to me, I love this color range. And you can see here I did the rose leaves and I'll show you the rose. We will get to the rose <laughs> in our practice. But this sparked a lot of interest. So from there, I went back in my book and I had a blank page. So I decided to figure out what colors I had used on this painting and try to mix them again and put it here. And I really like the way that that turned out. I'm going to do that more. I just like the really long lines of colors instead of just doing little tiny squares. Because to me, this itself is a piece of art. Even though it reflects these colors, 
that I used in the palette. I just really even like looking at that. And I can imagine taking these colors again and trying to do another picture using that palette. Isn't it pretty? These pages were for another class that I was working on. It's my Finding Beauty in the Everyday Winter Session. And I was looking around the yard and these were the 12 colors, if you can believe that, these were the 12 colors that I had for winter. And I was trying to figure out if I could mix them and what would happen if I added some together. But I just love seeing that now because it reminds me of my shock of finding all of these beautiful colors in winter. And I'm about an hour from Chicago, so you know how cold it gets here in winter. And this was what I was able to find. So it was just really astonishing to me, but I love now that I have a record of it. And the last thing, number six, is practice. You know I truly believe in the art of practice because it hones your skills, it makes you try new things, it gets you out of your comfort zone, and to me that's what a sketchbook is all about. So here I did a couple pages of pears. I was working on a course pears and leaves and watercolor, and I wanted to play with colors. So I did a yellow one, a green one, and I was trying different shading and different shapes. You can see this guy's real squatty. He kind of leans sideways. And then I did a couple together, and then I did a really bold one. So it gave me confidence as I went. You can see how pale this one is in here that I really didn't leave much light. Here I left a little more white space. By the time I got here, I was very comfortable leaving white, and then here I did a very light value. I did light against the dark, which made this almost seem white in here. It was a great practice. This I was practicing layers. I found a cover of a magazine, and I liked how they had it layered up, and I was like, I wonder if I could do that. So the background here was very faint. This I used a crayon to write the word home. Here I just liked that the it was a piece of fabric that went all the way across and then this tag laid on front and then there was another tag on top of that. So I liked working in the layering, trying to figure out, okay, how would I do that? What would I do first? Would I add the dark first or would I add the light? I did the light, by the way, and then I added the dark um, on top and again this was another stencil I just put my stencil down traced it with pencil and then I put the marks in there with darker with darker paint so isn't it nice with the layers you can see it lets it let you know what's in front what's behind and then I added those very faint shadows to really make something stand out this was another one that I set up I just have this little shell it's about this big you guys and the box itself was just a little bigger but I tried to magnify it so that I could get all of the colors it's a fossilized shell with all these really nice colors in there and I had some tissue paper that I wanted it to look like so I was trying to concentrate on dark and light and then trying to make form of the background because here you're actually looking in the depth of the box so I could actually see the side and the bottom and so I was trying to get those kind of layers as well. This was a still life that I set up. In the fall I had found some Chinese lanterns and they were dried out and of course a leaf and when I set them together I really liked that setup. And so I knew that I just wanted to fill a page with it because it's a long and skinny setup. And as I mixed, these were the color mixes that I used through that whole piece. But it was a really nice practice of layers and trying to figure out how and what goes first. <laughs> so when I was doing like this really light one, I did last because I was the most nervous about that. So I played here first with getting just bright orange, going a little deeper, and then going to the like maroon. And on this one, I did a really, really pale orange, just like that color, barely an orange at all. And then I just keep kept deepening with more orange and more orange. And then this one, I just started with a pale yellow, a little bit of orange, and then kind of a darkish orange brown color. And it was fun to kind of work through. I was trying to glaze and I was trying to do some 
wet on dry to see which would come out better. And it was just really, I had to be patient in order to try that. And again, this was the rose page. This was the roses from the color here. And I was playing with just looking at them square on, like face up. So that was the face of the rose here. And then this one, it was sideways like that so that I could just see all the little delicate ruffles. And this was really a challenge for me because <laughs> first of all, these just look like um, wheels of color. They really don't look like roses, but I was okay with that. I was trying to get different values. I wanted some really light and I like some darks. What I learned about this exercise was I like more white of the paper showing. So you can see more white in there. This exercise, I liked how the ruffles all looked dark, but I could also see the separation and I was having a hard time getting that. So I learned up here that I need to go lighter first and then take my time darkening instead of being in a rush. That's what I learned about myself. <laughs> so here's the roses and then here's the ruffles. Here's some more roses. These I were, was much more happier with. I love the lightness here and that extreme dark in the center, but I also like this. I was trying wet on wet. I don't do wet on wet enough. I should just make it where I do it regularly. And I like the way that this just added natural color without me having to do all the work. So I think that's what excited me about this page. And then I did the leaf next to the flower while it was wet. And I love how they kind of blurred into one another. This was one where I drew and I tried leaving more white. And then this was just an exercise in trying to do something white. They were snowberries. But I tried to do a background where it was soft and complemented the berries. So you can see this rose here. And then you can see this one down here. And then here's my snowberries. I just tried to get real colorful with the shadows. And then of course, leaves. <laughs> I just did these today because I found the branch and they were really just beautiful. So whenever I find a bigger branch of leaves, I try to put it in one of my bigger sketchbooks instead of my little five and a half by five and a half. But this was just one color. This is Schminke's forest gray from their forest line of super granulating colors and I just really had fun with trying to go dark to light and just adding more water as I went so when I got here it's really kind of pale in coloration and so I just thought that that was a really nice use of that paint so you can see that one is much heavier then I got lighter in color lighter in color and then lighter in color so those are my six tips for your sketchbook. Do not let the white pages intimidate you. <laughs> Do not let them intimidate you at all. You have control. Even if you just open up the page randomly, open up your sketchbook in the middle and just paint. No one says you have to go in order. If that makes you feel better, because I know that first page is always a hard page, right? You're like, what if I mess up? I always try to do art supplies because we have them sitting around us. We know what they are because we use them. And if I can just get past this, usually though the first page I usually don't do first. Like I said, I did the palette place first in this book and then I had the courage to do this front page. But it's a lot of pressure to do that front page first. I get it. <laughs> what if I mess it up, right? I know, we all have that fear. But remember, it's a sketchbook. That's what you bought it for was practice, not perfection. And if you don't get past that, you're not going to improve. I can show you, you know, so many different ways that I've improved. I've tried to share that with you as we've gone through this book. So just remember, it's paint to paper. And why else did you buy the sketchbook? That's right, for practice. The art of practice is your best friend as an artist. Trust me on this. I guarantee if you fill a sketchbook, you will see improvements. You will become more confident. It will make you more playful and experimental in the next sketchbook. Like I said, 96 pages is pretty daunting. <laughs> but you saw what I have left. 
not many. So that's really exciting. And you've seen the different exercises that I've done in here. And for that, it's made me a better watercolorist. I have a long way to go, but I'm getting closer all the time. If you were inspired by these sketchbook tips today, please leave me a comment and let me know what your favorite was. I would love to know. Thanks so much for watching.